And we now move on to the third question in the name of Assemblymember Berry. Um, that says, how does London's policing support our human rights? Assemblymember Berry, who would you like to start? Uh, um, to, to the Commissioner initially, from? please. So the, the broad question. So I, I, I believe that the Met is a uh, human rights compliant and human rights upholding police service. I think we make very difficult balancing decisions about people's human rights on a minute by minute, day by day basis in a whole variety of different scenarios. The officers are well trained, uh, they are highly professional uh, and uh, this is a uh, city in which people's rights are, broadly speaking, upheld and most certainly by the police. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. Um, I want to follow up um, and discuss the uh, principle of policing by consent. Um, I know you know them, but the so-called Peel's Peel principles set out the definition of this. And I'd like to ask specifically about the fourth principle, which says to recognise always that the extent to which the cooperation of the public can be secured diminishes proportionately the necessity of the use of physical force and compulsion for achieving police objectives. So conversely, we'd expect that the more force used by police officers, the less trust from the public. Do you agree with and support that principle? Um, broadly speaking, yes, I do. I, I, I think most of the Peelian principles, despite our 190-year birthday, uh, uh, make absolute sense here. Uh, the fact, as again, another principle, that our powers should be used sparingly and only when necessary is reflected in in human rights legislation and indeed in the way we approach it. Of course, some people, as I indicated in relation to protests, some people will think that more force should have been used and others will think, think that less force should have been used or less intrusion should have been used into privacy in a, different, in a variety of situations. So our job is to try to, A, stay within the law, of course, uh, and, and uh, B, to get an effective policing job done within the law, which does on occasion require force, proportionately, and does on occasion require intrusion, and our officers have to make those judgments. Not everybody will agree with them all of the time, but I hope that broadly speaking, and I think that broadly speaking, the public in London think we do that well. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, I, I too believe these principles should be at the heart of the way the Met operates. But what we've seen in recent years is a number of new tactics at a strategic level that involve physical force or compulsion being introduced first without political and public consent being secured beforehand. And these include uh, spit hoods, for example, facial recognition technology, the citywide Section 14 order, which I, I don't want to dwell on here, and borough-wide Section 60s. Now, I think you might be going about the introduction of new tactics in the wrong order. Shouldn't we be having discussions about these uh, new intrusive tactics and the ways in which human rights might be engaged in advance? Um, I think obviously it depends hypothetically uh, on what tactic you're talking about and, how, and, and, the, and, and the level of change and intrusion that it might bring. Um, so there are certain things in which I think it's really obviously very important to have a, a, a discourse in various ways with the public before we might make a change. But you asked, for example, about spit guards and, and, and the use thereof. And actually, there's very, 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 very extensive conversations uh, with the public, uh, not formal consultations through statutory mechanisms, but very extensive surveying and conversations with all sorts of different people before, first of all, we introduced them in custody, and then secondly, uh, I made the decision more latterly to introduce them on, on the street. Uh, so I think we are careful and thoughtful about that, but I will always reserve, because it's clear in the law that uh, an officer has the right within the law to use whatever force or, or intrusion they think is necessary in that particular situation, and on occasions that will be a high level very early on, and that's what keeps people safe. Uh, they need to be able to you know, start low and gear up, or occasionally start high. A uh, you know, firearms officer has to be there right now. And I would say the same with my ability or my senior officer's ability to change our strategy and our tactics in response to a particular change of threat or, or risk. Now, when you come to something like live facial recognition, uh, I've been the first to say that new technologies, which should be being used by the police, in my view, need to be done so in a way which is in accordance with broadly what the public would like. And I, I am welcoming of as many conversations about this as possible. 
Uh, and I think we need to have a dialogue. But what would be a disgrace is if we get to 2025 and we've, we're still talking and nobody is making any decisions about how we go forward. And I do have freedom as the Commissioner to decide operationally what tactics we will deploy, what new technologies we might wish to use, and I will always want to do that with the support of the public. Um, I move on to the Mayor now, but in respect of, of Spithoods, I, I'm not sure things happened in the order that you, you set out there. Um, in September 2016, um, there was an announcement that they would start to be used, um, at which point we all heard about it, I think for the first time. The Guardian reported on the 6th of September um, that the Met have said they will pause plans to introduce Spithoods after a torrent of criticism from human rights groups, and the Guardian understands the Met failed to tell the Mayor of London about the controversial scheme that was due to start within weeks. It's the order in which things happen. Obviously, after that, there was a big debate, but it's the order that I'm thinking about here. Mr Mayor, with, with respect to what the Commissioner just said, um, you've certainly brought up human rights and, and the need to um, do intrusive tactics after a public debate, and in, especially in respect of that Spithood's decision. You said the decision on which to use intrusive tactics is a highly emotive one and should be informed by public engagement. Obviously, uh, last month we had the incident with the facial recognition at King's Cross, which we didn't know about. It seems to me the police are generally seeking political and public forgiveness, not consent, when bringing in new tactics. And would you agree that's been your experience so far? No. I think um, both this commissioner and the last one, uh, nobody's perfect, uh, really try hard to engage, consult, educate the public. Let me give you just some examples. It's because the police do what they do that we're able to enjoy the right to life, the right to a fair trial, the right not to suffer inhumane degrading treatment, the right to family and privacy life, the right to protest. Some examples. One of the concerns the Commission will have in relation to homicide and violent crime is because of the articles you write to life. In relation to modern slavery raised by Tom Copley, that's, a, uh, that's a inhumane degrading treatment, Article 3 right. In relation to the concern raised by Joanne McCartney around victims of uh, rape, <coughs> that's Article 6, fair trial. In relation to concerns around buffer zones, around abortion clinics that the police uh, uh, enforce, that's Article 8, right to family, family and privacy life. In relation to protest, the reason why we have more than 3,000 protests this year and the police work incredibly hard, including two Saturdays ago, is Article 10, right to uh, protest. And so it's because we've got the best police service in the world and they engage and, in, and facilitate and consult that we can have and enjoy these human rights. Are they perfect? No, but nobody is. Me, least of all. So the, the question I'm asking is not about retrospective criticism, it's about whether or not we need to be more proactive in having those debates in advance. I'm asking that um, our political debate by representatives takes place, that the public are engaged before we decide whether to use these tactics at all, before they're deployed against the public. It seems to me things are happening not, not at all, but in the wrong order. Isn't that something you can agree well, with? Well, I think you're conflating two issues. One is consultation with the public, choose human rights. Uh, and, and some human rights aren't popular, as we've heard from Tory politicians. So human rights are what they say on the tin, rights for humans. The job of the police is to police our community, and sometimes there is a tension. Mm. Of course there's a tension between uh, the rights people want to enjoy and the job of the police to keep us safe and to uphold the law. That's right. And so just to bring up, the Commissioner herself has said it's not for the police to determine the balance between security and privacy. That tension is something that's for not just public opinion, but also political debate between representatives who are here. We're here to well, defend human rights too. The, let me just give you an example of the frustration we share. Facial rec recognition is a phenomenon that's basically here. It's the 21st century. Our frustration is the delay from the government and parliament to legislate and provide the rules by which the police can apply facial recognition. So the frustration the commissioner has as the person in charge of keeping us safe is, we know the technology is there, uh, how can we use it, bearing in mind there's no legislation from central government. Fortunately in London we've got an ethics panel, they've made recommendations and to give the police their due, they're, they're applying the recommendations made from the ethics panel before they roll out facial recognition. And the other point is this. Mr. Mayor, you spent two trials. years on the streets ahead of any decisions being made on a police. Well, I'm sorry. I'm, so, I'm really sorry. That's just wrong. The, what the police could have done is to roll out blankly facial recognition. They chose not to do so. Instead, instead, what they chose to do is have pilots and trials. They're damned they do and damned they don't. What they then, what they then did was said, you know what? The ethics panels have made recommendations. We're going to follow the recommendations and pause 
and so we can do so. I mean, I think you've got to give some credit to our police service who've got a really difficult job, job in relation to making sure they uphold the law, but also respect uh, and make sure we can enjoy mm. our human rights. And the problem is the delay in legislation from national government and our parliament. I just, I just have to stop now, but I just Le hope we can get the, the balance of the Barry, order right in the future. Time is up.